Welcome back. IAM service can be considered to be the heart of your AWS account. Without a proper understanding of IAM service, you will have difficulty managing your AWS account, particularly who can do what, who can use what, and your AWS account's security. Additionally, if you are preparing for AWS certifications, you must have a solid understanding of IAM service. In this hands-on video, we will learn about IAM policy using a practical approach to get a good grasp of IAM policy and its concepts. That being said, let's start. Let's learn about IAM policy. Right now, I have opened two browsers. And in this browser session, I've logged in as a root user, right? And in this other session, I logged in as an IAM user, okay? If I click on user groups here, I can see one group, admin group, which is listed here, okay? If I go to the browser on the right-hand side, and if I click on, for example, on users, as you can notice, there is just one user. I am user S Singh is listed here, okay? We have one group, an admin group, and this user S Singh. And the user S Singh is a member of the admin group, okay? What I'm going to do is remove the S Singh user from the admin group. Okay, if I come here, admin and this user, okay, I'm going to remove the S-Sing user from the admin group. Okay, let me remove it. And it says this user will lose the group permissions. That's okay. Now the S-Sing user is not part of the admin group, okay? Let's drag it here. And if I refresh and click on users again, okay? As you can notice, we get the message that you need permissions. You do not have the permission required to perform this operation, okay? Because the S-Sing user is no longer part of the admin group. That is why this S-Sing user cannot list IAM users in this AWS account, okay? Which makes sense, right? Because we removed the S-Sing user from the admin group. The question is, what can we do to fix this issue? We can fix this issue in two ways. Number one is that I can add permissions and use policies. So I can add permissions, right? Directly. The other way is to attach the inline policy. Okay. That being said, what I'll do, I'm going to attach existing policies directly. Okay. Let me come here and I'll attach the policy directly. And this time I will assign the S sing IAM user read only permissions. Okay. I am read only access. I'm going to assign I am read only access to S Sing user. Okay? Add permissions. Right now, this user has got access. Even though this admin group has no user, the S Sing user now has read only access. Okay? That being the case, now, if I come here, this S-Sing user, this I am user, and if I click on users, as you can notice, this I am user can see the list of I am users in this AWS account, okay? You can notice that the user S-Sing is listed here, okay? But for example, if I go to user groups, and if I click on create group, and let's call it engineering, okay? I get this message that this user cannot be created because this S-Sing user doesn't have permission to create a user. The reason is S-Sing has just been assigned one I am read only access policy, okay? As you can realize, this shows the power of I am service. Now, if I go to my user groups here, okay? This is the root user. I'm logged in as a root user here. I can do two things. Number one, I can add this S-Sing user back to the admin group, okay? So that way, the S-Sing user will be able to create or add users to this AWS account, okay? Added this user. The S-Sing user is re-added to the admin group, okay? And the second thing, I'm going to create one group. Let's click on create group. Let me create an engineering group, okay? Add policy, add the first one, it doesn't matter. I just want to show you a demo and I will say create a group, okay? Now the engineering group has been created. Let me add S-Sing user to this group as well. Okay? So now if I come here user and say S-Sing 
And as you can see here, that S-Sync user has three policies. One is administrator access that is inherited from the admin group. And the other one is AWS Direct Connect Read Only Access, which we assign to the engineering group. So this policy, this user is inheriting from the engineering group. The third one, which I directly assigned, is Read Only Access. You can see that these three policies are listed here. As you can see, these policies get inherited in different ways by an IAM user. Okay, now let's see how policies work. Let me drag this one here. Let's see how policies work. Let's go to policies. We have all available policies here. These are all managed policies. Okay, let's look for administrator access. This one. This one is the administrator access policy and we have seen it before. If we look at the JSON form of this policy, as you can see, we have version here and we have a statement element which is a JSON array. What it means is that there can be multiple statements in an IAM policy document, okay? This policy contains only one statement. The effect is allowed and the action is star. That means any action is allowed and the resource is star. That means any resource. In simpler words, this policy says that any action is allowed on any resource. That's why this statement makes this policy administrative policy, okay? Here, this is another view of the policy. We have 365 services. This administrator access policy can administer 365 services, right? As of this recording, this number may grow as AWS is an evolving platform. We can have a look at another policy, which is IAM read-only access. As you can see, the IAM read-only access policy allows one of 365 services, right? This one, okay? As you can notice, there are 365 services. It allows only one of them, okay? And if you look at the JSON document here, it says effect allow. And it says that using this policy, you can generate credential reports and generate last access details. These are all the different actions allowed on any resource if we use IAM read only access policy, okay? And you can also create your own policy. You have two ways of creating policy. One is that you can just simply start typing here in the JSON editor. And another is by using the visual editor here. This is very handy because for example, say you choose the IAM service. And for IAM service, for example, you want to have a list of user action, okay? For example, you are looking for list of users actions, this user. This one. And say you want to add additional. For example, get user action, okay? Right now, in this policy that we're creating, we added two actions, okay? And we can add specific resources or all resources. Let's select all resources, okay? And what are we going to do? We can say next, just ignore it, and next review, okay? We can give a policy name. For example, I can say this demo policy, okay? And click create policy. Okay, now we have created our own policy. This policy has two actions on all resources and you can see this has added one SID also. Okay, it's quite an efficient way to generate JSON directly from the visual editor. Okay, in this demo, we went through how to create an IAM policy. Okay, so let's do a few things here for user groups. I'm going to delete this engineering group. I don't need it. Let me click here, engineering group. And I'll click on delete, sort of cleaning. This has been deleted. Now the user S-Sing has full administrator access. Okay, that's it for this lecture. I hope you have got a good understanding of how IAM policy works.